Boy, society sure has progressed a lot. Equal rights has come a long way. Jim Crow laws have been abolished. My opening isn't swooping down from the sky to attack me. You know, I think this might be a good time for another L-Hack video. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. After the Civil War ended in 1865, the Black Code laws were approved by southern states. After the Civil War, these laws were intended to restrict the autonomy of African Americans in order to force them to work in a labor economy. I know early on in our history classes were taught that the end of the Civil War was the end of slavery, but it most certainly was not the end of oppression. You have to remember that before this, in 1857, during the Dred Scott vs. Sanford case, a decision was made by the Supreme Court that African Americans were not permitted to be United States citizens. While this might seem superficial on the surface, what it really means is that no matter how much you abused an African American person in the United States, they were not a citizen and therefore had no legal ability to sue the state, or their oppressor, or anyone else. In 1877, Jim Crow law were legislated in order to gain electoral support from southern states. The government finally withdrew the last of its troops after the Civil War and pulled them back to the north, away from the south. Afterwards, the first Jim Crow laws were enacted to separate white and black races. From the late 1800s to the early 1900s, almost 4,000 black people were either burned alive or lynched in the United States for violating these instated Jim Crow laws. There's a reason that I'm saying black people specifically, as later on there would be a separation between black people and people of color. Bear in mind that obviously these are traits that people are born with and have no choice in. You are born black, you are born a person of color, or you are born white. Obviously there are other distinctions that can be made in there, but I want to focus on those ones specifically for the sake of this video. In 1890, Louisiana started to require black people and white people to have separate accommodations on railroads. Before these laws in Louisiana, people who were black and people who were white were allowed to share the same spaces. Now, this law actually distinguished between people who were white, black, or people who were colored. Essentially people who were mixed race. These laws didn't necessarily give colored people the same rights as whites, but it did put them in another distinct category between whites and blacks, separating people into three distinct categories. I know everybody knows the famous Rosa Parks story where she wouldn't give up her seat on a bus, but before then we had the Plessy story and the Plessy vs. Ferguson case. In 1896, Plessy refused to sit in the train car that was registered for colored people and was arrested instantly. The Citizens Committee in New Orleans attempted to fight the case and brought it all the way up to the Supreme Court. Keep that nugget of information, we're going to use it later. Unfortunately, in this case, once everything was brought to the Supreme Court, they actually lost. The Supreme Court then governed that separate but equal facilities must be used as accommodations. They deemed that it was constitutional to segregate people as long as the segregation allowed you to have an equal opportunity in both areas. So you could not have a train car that was of lower quality for black people or colored people and then have a train car of higher quality for white people. Everything had to be equal, yet it still allowed for the segregation, so the problem was still there. Fast forwarding to 1948, Executive Order 9981 finally desegregated the armed services. The civil rights movement had been used in federal courts to attack Jim Crow statuses and Harry Truman ordered that the United States Army must be desegregated. This is important because before this point you would be able to have a platoon of only black people and send them in for the worst of duties, and then have a platoon of white people and then not send them in for the worst of duties. An example of this could be found during the Indian Wars which happened between 1870 and the early 1900s. Cavalry units, known as Buffalo Soldiers, so named for their dark skin and hair, these soldiers were sent under the command of strictly white officers and they were stationed in the southwest of the Great Plains in order to construct forts and keep order in otherwise lawless territory. Not exactly the most glorious of duties, especially considering that their officers at the time were strictly white. In 1909, the National Negro Conference met in New York City and founded the Natural Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP. This organization was bent on fighting desperately for equal rights for their people and others. To that end, in 1950, they challenged the Separated But Equal Act that had been enacted earlier about train cars, among other things. There was no large ruling in favor of their request, unfortunately, but Delaware's Supreme Court ended up ruling that a district had to admit black students to white schools until adequate facilities could be provided. Considering this is 50 years after the initial issue had been posited with the train cars, saying that equal facilities had to be given to other areas regardless, and even understanding that this is in a different state entirely, 
Don't you still find it very odd that 50 years after this had already happened, adequate facilities were not being provided to people of color? The desegregation in this sense only started because it was inconvenient to create these adequate facilities. Finally, in 1954, the Board of Education of Topeka overturned the verdict during the Plessy and Ferguson trial. This overturned the ruling completely, ordering legally mandate public school segregation as unconstitutional. However, it did not end segregation immediately. Case in point was that one year later was when Rosa Parks had her famous refusal to give up her seat on a bus to a white man. While not extremely illegal, this act was considered an act of civil disobedience because black people were still considered obedient and subservient to white men. Thanks to the media coverage of this event, though, the Civil Rights Act ended up being able to be enacted later on down the road in 1964 and helped end legally mandated segregation. Unfortunately, residentially created segregation that had already been in place could not be ended at this time, and we still struggle with this issue today. Finally, in 1971, during the Swan v. Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education trial, the Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the Fair Housing Act of 1968 came together to end the legal legal sanctions of the Jim Crow laws. These new laws essentially usurped the old ones. While these laws put an end to legal segregation, obviously there are still a lot of issues that we have to face today. By the time we got to 1967, the U.S. Supreme Court decision for Loving v. Virginia declared that laws prohibiting interracial marriage are in fact unconstitutional. A year after this, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Once the Equal Rights Amendments passed in Congress, the proposed equal rights were there to explicitly guarantee the equality of all people people regardless of gender. Note, however, that at this point we're only talking about gender. So now we have equality for people of all genders, and we have equality for people of all races. Legally speaking, of course. By the time we get to 1978, the Pregnancy Discrimination Act is signed, which prevents employment from discriminating against female workers who are or intend to become pregnant. By the time we get to 1990, we get the Americans with Disabilities Act, which protect people with disabilities from discrimination in many aspects of life, including employment and education. By 1993, we get the Family and Medical Leave Act, which most of you are probably familiar with if you've had to use it once or twice before. In 2003, during Lawrence v. Texas, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional for a Texas statute to criminalize same-sex sexual activity. If we fast forward to 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court finally decides that same-sex marriage should be legal in all 50 states. Obviously, we are still recoiling from some of the issues that have come from this, because there are still some states that try to say that same-sex marriage is not legal within their state, even if the federal mandate is there. On top of that, there are store owners that have fought back against this by putting up signs like, No Gays Allowed, in front of their doors. Apparently, people have been fighting against equal rights ever since this country was founded, and I don't understand why. In the past 200 years, we've come a long way, and I've only provided a very brief glimpse at our history and equal rights. Obviously, in a lot of these cases, we focused on one thing at a time, starting with African Americans and then moving on to gender and then finally getting on sexuality. The point I'm trying to make, though, here is that there's a lot of progress we've made, but possibly a lot of progress that still needs to be made. And I think that in the case of what just happened in Colorado recently, I think this has shown to be true. The reason that I provided this short history of America's issues with equal rights was to hopefully paint a picture. And remember when I said to please hold on to that nugget of information about the Supreme Court being overturned later on down the road? Well, it was just legally mandated once the issue got to the Supreme Court that a business owner is allowed to refuse a same-sex couple based on their religious preferences and discriminations against homosexuality. While in some small part I can understand where these businesses are coming from, as longtime watchers of my channel will know that I used to struggle with homophobia myself. However, I feel like this mandate is a step backwards and not a step forward. In my eyes, this is no different than segregating blacks and whites. Almost all the science available to us shows that people are not given a choice on whether or not they are going to be homosexual, just as people are not given a choice on whether or not they want to be black. For a brief nitty-gritty on what happened in Colorado, a few years back, a baker did not want to bake a cake for a same-sex couple, because he thought that by baking the cake himself and making it specially for them, he would be sending a message that he condoned their marriage. Now, to be fair to this particular individual, he did actually offer them a different cake from on the shelf, a stock one if you will. But to me, this is no different than offering a black person a different train car on the same train. You might be offering them something equal, something that might be equally good, but you are still 
still segregating the individual and you are still discriminating against them. Now I'm sure there's a conversation that can be had about a store owner's ability to refuse any and all people who walk through his door. However, in this particular instance, the issue was that the store owner did not want to send a message that he approved of a particular gay couple's ability to get married. I personally find an act like this to be abhorrent. Essentially, when I read between the lines on this, I'm seeing an individual that does not believe in equal rights and does not want to send a message that he believes equal rights should be allowed. I don't know what you see here, but that's what I see. I don't know if this is a topic that my fellow atheist YouTubers would like to pick up because of the political fire behind it, and I would completely understand if many of them don't want to. But if you do feel like this is something that you need to talk about, then I would highly implore you to do so. We need more voices talking about this topic, especially since the Supreme Court just ruled in favor of religious dogma. The Supreme Court has been overturned in the past when they have been shown to be perfectly wrong. In this case, I 100% believe that the Supreme Court is wrong in their ruling and the discrimination against somebody is very abhorrent. But in any case, the point of this video is to show that as far as we've come in the equal rights movement in America, there is still a long ways to go. I know this is different than my usual video as most of the religious subtext and connotation did not come until the end. Whether or not you guys agree with my particular stance on this, I do want you all to think about the implications of this particular legal action that was taken. And I wanted to point out the strides that America has already made made in equal rights in the past to show that we are capable of changing things like this. So as always, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you end up liking the video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and start a conversation. I truly believe this is a pertinent topic that we need to be discussing. The usual links to Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and everything else will be in the description below. And before we get into the patron slides everyone, as always, insert end of video tagline here.